So hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today for our Studio Suite webinar. My name is Joel Stoner. I'm the founder and CEO of Alter Media, and today we are doing a special webinar. It's going to be an overview demo of uh, all of Studio Suite. Uh, so uh, we're going to be about 60 to 90 minutes. Uh, we'll take a five-minute break about halfway through. Uh, we are recording this, uh, and it will be posted to our site uh, probably, hopefully, within a week if, uh, if you don't if you're not able to finish it today. Uh, if you have questions, go ahead and type them as they come up. I will try to answer them either in line or at the end, depending on when I see them and when I can. Um, we're doing webinars most Thursdays. Uh, there's a schedule on our site. Uh, if you go there and you can actually register from there if there's a little Google Calendar section. So what is Studio Suite? Uh, it's a lot of things. Uh, customer relationship management, enterprise resource planning, scheduling, budgeting, project management, barcodes, invoicing, uh, all of those things, and it ties everything together. Um, now, what a lot of people say is the first time they see Studio Suite, uh, it's, it seems chaotic and noisy. It's kind of like the first time you get, you know, you go to New York City. Uh, it seems crazy. Uh, and uh, Studio Suite's a lot like that. Um, but once you learn that there's a, a, the streets are in a grid, uh, there's a taxi on every corner and things like that, you start to feel comfortable. Um, and if you're doing, I'm going to back up my slide there for a minute. Uh, if you're doing media production management, um, you need these tools uh, just to manage your business. Um, whether what you're doing is, um, I'll get to my next slide, whether what you're doing is gaming uh, or corporate uh, production management or uh, post production. Uh, or pre uh, production or post production, um, broadcast or advertising uh, or government or education, all of those people uh, have the same kinds of needs and very similar workflows. Uh, and these are the kinds of people that are using Studio Suite. Um, and you now, if you think about this for a minute, you, you have to realize that the, the workflow that NASA has uh, is going to be different than Sony uh, and different than SAP. Uh, or different than Crawford or Off Hollywood or Click3x, big post houses, or different than Google or YouTube. Uh, and the reason for that, one of the big hallmarks of Studio Suite is that it's extremely flexible. Uh, everybody's got different workflows, uh, different uh, preferences about uh, interface design. Uh, and with Studio Suite, you have the control over that. And that's why we've been able to get so many customers is because we can adapt Studio Suite to the way they work and that they can adapt it to the way it works because it's very often based on the data that you put into it rather than some rigid uh, structure that you have to comply with. So um, let's talk about the module structure of Studio Suite. Uh, at the very highest level, we've got a production. Uh, and a production equates to a season of a TV show, uh, a feature film, uh, maybe a large multi-phase project where you're doing maybe a whole campaign or a, a trade show where you've got graphics and video and sound. Each one of those um, needs to be managed separately. Uh, and of course, you can have many different productions going on at once. And within a single production, you may have a project or multiple projects. And a project uh, would relate to, in this uh, kind of hierarchy, an episode of a TV show. Uh, or a large aspect of a film like uh, pre-production, the shooting aspect, the editing aspect, the mixing aspect, uh, or maybe it's a whole reel of film, uh, or maybe it's just a one-off job. So projects can uh, be a part of a larger production, or they can be their own standalone little thing that aren't connected to a project. Within each project, uh, you have one or more events. Um, and what is an event? Well, an event is when you've got some resources. Uh, and in our world, uh, we've got different kinds of resources. We have rooms, equipment, people. It can be contacts or clients. We have services that we provide, like uh, you know, editing or compositing or maybe just deliveries. Uh, and then we have media inventory as well, uh, materials. Maybe it's even just batteries that you provide. Um, and all of those things have rates. Uh, you can have one or more rates for each resource. You could have an hourly rate, a daily rate, a weekly rate, a client specific rate, a rental style rate. Uh, and you can even have different rate cards so that um, uh, if you're doing corporate work, that's one set of pricing. If you're doing commercial work, that's another set. If you're doing in-house work for your friend, that's another set of rates. Uh, and a rate can track both the charge and the expense, uh, which means that it, when you start putting together these resources into a project, you get a very instant idea of your uh, profit loss uh, your, uh, of, of the project that you're working on. So you know how much you know headroom you've got to, to make adjustments for pricing. But back to our story is when you uh, add 
or combine these resources, uh, rooms, equipment, contacts, people, services, with a calendar event with a rate. That's what we call an event. And again, a project can have one or more events on it. And these things are what appear in the calendar. Uh, so we've got a calendar here, and this is also visible on your mobile devices uh, through uh, either what we call Studio Suite um, Web Glancer on your mobile devices or through Google, which we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, and those events are also what show up on an invoice, and those invoices can get exported out to uh, something like QuickBooks or other third-party uh, accounting software. Uh, and then when we're doing the point of all of this that we're talking about here is to create content. Uh, so there has to be some kind of library uh, involved to capture all of the media assets, whether they're physical media assets or digital media assets. In the process of doing that, very often there's tasks involved, like read the script, approve the script, uh, load the content, uh, start the edit. Uh, some of those things um, may be billable, some of them aren't, uh, and then maybe you need to notify people about those tasks as well. So that's all inside of Studio Suite. Uh, and of course, this all links back to the all important clients because uh, none of this would happen if we didn't have somebody paying for it. So this is kind of like the mind map of Studio Suite that I wanted you to see uh, and kind of you know stick in your brain so you kind of understand how um, it all works. Um, and uh, our next webinar is May 2nd where we're gonna be covering Studio Suite basics. And that's, that's the end of our slideshow. Uh, let's go ahead into Studio Suite, shall we? Um, so if you've seen one of the videos up on our site um, called Why You Need Studio Suite, I'm not going to play it now, but there's a million little sticky notes, uh, and it, it's like that chaotic New York scene, uh, and then they all fade into a list of all these different modules, and then it morphs into the Studio Suite menu, and that's what we're looking at here. Um, now, so these are all the modules that come with Studio Suite, um, and uh, not all of your users uh, may need access to these. So because Studio Suite is multi-user, you may have some users that just need a few big buttons on their Studio Suite. Um, and you can obviously control which buttons they're going to be able to see. But this is how you can manage who can see what information in Studio Suite. Um, and uh, there's some other little tricks, like maybe you want to have a, a different kind of color on the background. Here's a nice mountain scene that's going to you know, be my background. And you can always set those up yourself. Um, I'm just going to go back to my default. Um, so let's talk about this main menu a little bit. Uh, we can see on these buttons, some of them have indicators. Uh, I can see I've got seven projects overdue, 66 web requests uh, that are pending, uh, 17 tasks overdue, 302 invoices, wouldn't that be nice? If anything was due today, uh, we would see a little uh, badge there on the right side. Uh, on the um, right side of the screen, we see the daily notes, which everybody can type into and see, um, you know, things like pizza in the kitchen. Um, excuse my typing as we do this. I'll be talking and typing at the same time. Not easy. Um, and then below that, I see my messages uh, and my tasks. Uh, and when I hover over these things, I'll see further details uh, about it. Uh, so there's a little uh, to hover over there. Uh, and then at the very bottom, we're going to see uh, all the line items or events that are scheduled today. Um, so I can see right from the main menu everything that's scheduled. If I want to edit something, I can just click on it uh, and make an adjustment here. Let's say, whoop, that's going to end at 6, and I'm going to put a little note in here about what's going on. And I can save that change uh, right from Studio Suite, uh, right from the main menu, I meant to say. Now, let's suppose I'm just a, a worker bee, and I don't care about all this other stuff. I just want to see my stuff. Well, I can do that. Uh, I'm just going to filter this to only view my events, um, because that's all I care about. Uh, and then, of course, I can see, hover over that, edit that if I need to. But uh, if I want to see everything, I can do that. So that's kind of the main menu. Um, next, I'm going to show you the regular interface. Let's go, actually, you know what? I'm going to skip that. I'm going to go into the setup. Um, I'm going to show you some fundamentals. So this is where you would put in your company name uh, and your primary company. Some of our customers kind of pose as several different uh, companies. They might have a production company, a development company, a rental company, a, a post-production facility, uh, all those different kinds of things. And you can definitely set that up in Studio Suite um, and have it kind of work as multiple uh, companies. Um, and that's very flexible because you can... Um, you know, if you're creating a something for my great company, the 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 letterhead for that, the invoicing for that, um, uh, will reflect the same, and you also get different reporting based on that. It's also multi-language, um, so if you're working in a different language, we can set that up. 
So I'm going to go uh, here, and this is where you would insert the logo for your company. Uh, this is where you would define the different tax rates that you're working with, and I'm not going to go into too much detail here. Um, but just know that there is a bunch of preferences that we can set up here. Um, the next important thing is kind of user accounts. Now, this is where you define all of the different users of Studio Suite, and you can see I've got a bunch here. And they all have what we call a privilege set. And a privilege set corresponds to kind of a role-based security or access level into Studio Suite. Now, obviously, the accounting person, uh, you would want to have a different level of access than the editor engineer, who probably should not see uh, a lot of financial information. And we've got a lot of administrator accounts here, but um, we've got a bunch of them. Uh, so I'm going to basically, I'm going to disable one of these uh, or enable one of these. Uh, and this is the different privilege sets that you can have. Administrator, owner, manager, accounting, technician, scheduler, producer, sales. And they can see kind of decreasing uh, functionality and visibility of uh, important information in Studio Suite. Uh, and then within that, if we go into a particular user account, I'll go into mine, uh, here's all the user-specific preferences where I can pick uh, the different main menus I've liked. Uh, I like, uh, and also most importantly, account permissions. So this is where we can go in and say, um, well, we like Joel, but we don't really want him messing around in the invoicing module. I'm going to turn that off. Um, and then let's go maybe to the uh, equipment inventory module. Uh, and we're going to allow him to view equipment records, but we don't want him to delete uh, any equipment records uh, or even be able to edit them. So he should be able to see, see what's in there. Uh, but not edit anything, not delete anything. He can create new stuff, uh, things like that. Maybe we don't want him to see the rates uh, that are attached to equipment as well. So you can see there's a really high degree of resolution uh, that uh, to apply to different users within your system. There's over 200 account permissions, um, so you can get to exactly what you need. And you can copy and paste those as well. So if you have come up with this perfect algorithm of perfect uh, permissions that you want to apply to a bunch of people, you can just copy and paste them across. Next, I'm going to go into the contacts module where I was a minute ago. Uh, and let's take a look at kind of the basic interface that we see uh, throughout the Studio Suite. Uh, I'm going to go look at my questions here. Let's see. Um, will this uh, webinar be recorded? Yes, it is. Um, Somebody asked, is it competing with the likes of Schedule and Zytec? Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, those are our prime competitors, um, and we're, I think, a good bit affordable, uh, but I'm, I'm not going to get into a, uh, uh, that speech right now. Let's just talk about Studio Suite uh, and our contacts. So um, this is a detail screen of contacts where we can see uh, callbacks, uh, calls and notes, uh, letters, uh, obviously name, address, and phone numbers, and things like that. Um, and um, if we go to the list tab, this is where we can see them all. And we've got some quick find things here. So if I want to find all of my clients or all of my vendors or all of my employees, uh, I can do that very quickly. Um, and as we go through these tabs across the top, notice that some of them have these red dots. So if I go to the more info, the red dot means that there is information there. Uh, and so from this more info tab, I can see and also jump to uh, all of the projects that this person's been involved with either as a client uh, or as a participant, meaning that they worked on it as a you know, producer or editor or engineer, um, uh, or as a talent. Maybe they were a voiceover or on-screen you know, person. So Studio Suite is kind of tracking all that together. Uh, and as we flip through our records here, uh, we can see all the different projects that people have been involved with over time. Uh, and if I jump to one of these, uh, let's try this one here. This takes me right into the, the projects module, uh, and I'm looking exactly at that project, uh, and I can see all the details, the, the resources, dates, times, statuses, and all that. I'm going to hit the back button now uh, to jump back into contacts. I'm right back where I was. Um, so we're, here we are in contacts, and from this web viewer tab, I can see a lot of information about this person. We've got these pre-formatted searches. So as I'm kind of flipping through my uh, list of contacts, I can see a lot of information about the people. Um, so I can go look at uh, Google Maps. I can see what they've done on IMDb, uh, any postings they've put up on YouTube, maybe all music, LinkedIn, if I was logged into my LinkedIn, it would show, and any other URLs that I've got. So, you know, just as you're talking to your clients on the phone, you get a lot of information uh, from them. It makes it very easy uh, right in Studio Suite. Maybe I want to uh, call this guy up. I just click on the new button there. I say I called, uh, and I'm just going to start typing whatever it is. Um, sometimes keeping track of these phone calls and com communications that you have is very important. So Studio Suite makes it easy to do that. 
Uh, there's some other tabs here in contacts, employee information, uh, financial information. And of course, this tab would be locked out to people at a lower level access. Uh, but from here, we can see uh, all of the uh, invoices that are related to a particular client. I'm going to flip to one that's got some. So here's one that's got one, and I can jump to a particular invoice. Oops, see, I'm not allowed to view that. You know what I should do? Um, sorry about this. I'm going to take a little detour here uh, and jump back into my user account and give myself permission uh, to show you the invoice module. Uh, select all. Okay. Now I should be able to do that. See how that works? So if I go to financial uh, and now I'm going to be able to go look at that particular uh, invoice. So here's the three invoices for that client. Uh, and of course, I can jump back to uh, my contact record to get right to where it was. Uh, we can also set up client specific rates. Uh, so if a particular client, we do work for them at a special price, uh, Studio Suite will track that and automatically use it next time. Um, let's go to the media assets tab. Uh, this is going to show us all of the media assets that belong to this contact. Uh, so as I filter through my list here, I can see one. Let's go back to this guy. Uh, this is going to allow me to go to, that's the go to button. Uh, this record in the library module where we see all the information about a particular media asset. I'm going to hit the back button again. Uh, and so here I'm in contacts again, and uh, I'm going to go to the attach and FTP tab, which has a red dot on it, showing me that I do have a uh, media asset for this. And I'm going to flip through my contacts in here, and I see all the different ones. Here is a, a Word document. Um, so I could click on that and see if that's still there. Yep, so it's going to open up that script for me uh, in Word. So I've got instant access to all of those uh, and a million other documents that open them. So um, you can see that it's very easy to track media assets. If in fact, I can just drag a file from my desktop right into Studio Suite. Uh, and it's basically storing a pointer to where that file is. It's not ingesting that. It's not moving that file around. Um, so kind of an important fact here is that if we want a bunch of people to be able to access that file, we would want to grab it from a shared location, uh, some shared server folder. Uh, and then that way, if anybody else on Studio Suite clicked on this file, uh, it would uh, allow them to have access to it. If it's on your you know, laptop and you've got it closed or at home or something like that, obviously they wouldn't be able to access it. So we can attach a, a bunch of different kinds of files. Um, and we can all, we can embed them. Uh, so if we wanted to put something in Studio Suite, we could. Um, so uh, we could also do whole folders. So let's say I just want to drag this folder in. Uh, maybe those are all the files on a particular project. I can open that up, and here is that folder. Um, we can also record a sound, uh, embed a picture, link a QuickTime. Uh, this one's pretty neat. We can actually do proxies and URLs. So if we're posting content up to uh, say YouTube or something like that, or we've got a folder full of proxies, uh, video proxies that we want to link to a given client, uh, we can link those. And there's also an integrated uh, FTP client. So if we need to uh, retrieve any kind of digital asset from a website um, through FTP or deliver one through FTP, we can do that right inside Studio Suite. Uh, and of course, it'll keep all the logging uh, of that. So we've got evidence that it's been done and everybody else on my studio suite will know about that. Uh, and we can also have the option to build that back to the client, uh, back to the project. Uh, and maybe we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, every module in studio suite also has, um, a reports tab. Uh, and this is where you can see the kinds of things uh, you'd expect to see from the module, uh, that you're in. Since we're in contacts, uh, we can see things like company lists and uh, phone book printouts and envelopes and labels. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, you can actually set up multiple companies. So let's say I'm posing uh, for this moment as my great company. Uh, my letterhead would see the details of that. Or if I want to go to Fidelity Images, I'm going to see uh, the letterhead information on that on all of my printouts. So there's a whole bunch of different kinds of printouts in every module uh, to show uh, the, the kinds of reports uh, that we need. Um, and there's an audit log. So every change that somebody makes on a record in Studio Suite gets logged, and uh, they don't have the ability to change it. Um, so we, as I flip through these records, uh, again, we can see who made the change, when they made it, what they changed it from, and what they changed it to. Uh, and this is great because you know maybe you um, deleted a phone number by accident. Um, you can come back to the screen and find the whole history of it. Or maybe somebody um, lowered the price of something uh, when they weren't supposed to. You can see who 
did that when they did it and then you go find out so we've got really uh, the ability to uh, have super accountability uh, for all the people that are using Studio Suite to find out what, when, and, and why they did certain things. And also, you know, if, if you, you have mistakes, you can do things uh, to you repair your mistake. So I'm going to go back to my list view here, uh, and I'm going to sort by status. Uh, and this is going to put all of my bookable people at the top of the list. And what's bookable? Um, when we make something booking, bookable, that means that they are a resource. Uh, they are bookable in our calendar. We can book them in projects. And so your staff uh, would be bookable. Your uh, freelancers uh, would be bookable. Your clients aren't typically bookable unless they're also um, uh, a bookable person for you. So I have bookable people, uh, and we've probably also got some bookable rooms or spaces. So this is my equipment module. I've gone ahead and put in a bunch of different rooms. Uh, some of them are bookable. I've got some offices and closets and things like that and aren't bookable. But notice I've also got some trucks that are bookable too. So a truck is, is kind of like a room with wheels. Uh, and then we can go into each particular room and see the different rates that correspond. Uh, so I'm going to go look at my Studio A rate. And just for kicks, I'm going to create a new room right now. So I, I hit the new button at the top and let's call this the webinar room. So we can all see it uh, and I'm going to call this a control room and it's in my building one and I'm going to make it bookable uh, and again that means that it's going to be able to appear in the calendar and I'm going to say yes put it in the calendar and so now when I go look at my calendar in a little bit I'm going to see that room in there it's just that easy um, and I'm going to make a rate for it so I talked briefly about this a bit ago in our, our, our map um, but now I'm going to create a rate so I click that button create new rate going to call it a regular rate and I'm going to call it say hourly. Uh, so we can count the unit of measure a number of different ways in Studio Suite by the hour, by the day, by the week, uh, lockout or each or one time. So for counting things like frames or minutes or uh, something like that, uh, we can do that. Uh, let's say I'm going to charge 100 bucks an hour for this, uh, but I know it costs me uh, 10 bucks an hour uh, for this, which means that when I book this room, I'm making roughly a $90 an hour profit or a 900% margin. Uh, and I can also put in a market rate. So let's say I'm a, in a corporate environment. Uh, and I know that if I did the same job uh, out in a commercial facility, it would cost 200 bucks an hour. And this is great for those corporate places where you need to justify the, the work that you're doing and why it costs so much. Um, so um, we can also say that a particular rate is client specific. Uh, so here's our client picker. I'm not going to pick one right now, but that's uh, just know that we could. Uh, we could also set up a default action for when we're doing this rate. Um, so let's say we're doing editing in this uh, item. And then we could also pick uh, some different rate cards. So I'm just going to use all for this rate. But if this rate was only effective uh, when I did, I don't know, educational pricing, uh, I could pick that rate card. And then here's a external accounting details. And this would work with QuickBooks, uh, MYOB, or Account Edge, um, or any other higher end thing. We've done uh, a number of accounting integrations with um, high end software, Sage, uh, SAP, things like that. So it's uh, those kinds of things we do on a custom basis for you. Um, and uh, just know that it's there. So we can create multiple what we call rate splits for these if we've got uh, several different prices that we go for. And there's some other details down at the bottom that I'm, I'm going to kind of skip over uh, for now. But just know that this is where you define what you're charging, how much it costs you, therefore your profit, maybe a market rate, and any other ex external accounting details. And again, we can create as many rates as we want. So I'm going to create a new one uh, just very quickly without all of my talking. I'm going to call this a daily rate. And let's say this is... Uh, by the day, the unit of measure, and we're going to charge a thousand bucks for this, and we know it costs us maybe a hundred bucks to do that, and the market rate for this is maybe fifteen hundred, something like that. So just that easy to create a rate. Now I've got two, uh, and I'm going to make the hourly rate the daily, the default. Um, so now within a given room, I want to see the equipment that's installed. Um, so I've clicked on my equipment uh, info tab. And I'm going to go to a, a room here that's got some stuff in it. Um, so now I'm back to my Studio A. And I can see all the equipment that's in here. And I'm going to click the Go To button. Now I'm in the Equipment Inventory uh, module, where I can see things like serial numbers, barcodes, purchase dates, uh, whether I purchased or leased it or own it, um, the cost of it, the current value, uh, any earnings. This is kind of neat. So Studio Suite is comparing uh, how much we paid for it 
uh, and then summarizing all of the revenue that we've generated from it. And I'll show you that in a minute uh, and showing us, you know, so far we've lost money on this item uh, if we're tracking it uh, like in a rental uh, environment. Um, so down the bottom, we can create things like packages. Uh, so maybe when you book the camera, uh, I think I've got a model of that here. Let me go to my basic camera set. Uh, when I when I book the camera, uh, it's going to bring along the lens and a light and a tripod. Uh, and that makes it so I don't have to think about all that. I just book the camera. All those other child items are booked automatically. You know, some of you, uh, this may be very important for other of you that don't track equipment. It's not. So just bear with us for a minute while we go through equipment here. Um, and so there's a lot that we can do here in uh, equipment. Um, we can see a little picture, a little put in some comments. It's also calculating a depreciation schedule. So uh, this does this a little bit more flexibly, uh, if that's a word, than something like QuickBooks or other accounting software because we can uh, put in different purchase dates, um, create a residual value, end of life, what the term is going to be. Uh, and then it's basically we can see the value of this on any given day. Uh, and there's reporting. So you can actually, over in the reports tab, print out a um, depreciation schedule of how much is all of my equipment worth uh, at this point in time uh, based on the depreciation schedule. So I'm going to jump back to uh, detail. Uh, oh, I see some questions piling up here. Let me take a break out uh, to look at these. Um, Somebody is asking if we interface with Schedule. That's funny. Uh, we can import data from Schedule. I will mention that uh, we've moved several people off of Schedule into Studio Suite, um, where they uh, we were able to export the data out of Studio Suite and then into uh, Studio Suite. Um, let's see. And uh, somebody asked, how is SAP using it? Um, well, many of you know SAP is a very large uh, database company, and uh, even though they are obviously very skilled at creating databases, uh, they've chosen Studio Suite uh, to be able to manage their in-house media production management um, because we've got a really great system already built. They don't have to rebuild it. Um, so they, they can purchase Studio Suite for a lot less than it would cost to, for them to build it again, even though that's what they do. Okay, um, back, I think that's it for the questions at the moment. Um, so proceeding along, um, still in equipment, so let's look at rates. So I showed you rates earlier uh, in rooms, but I wanna show you uh, one other aspect of this, uh, which is when we do a day as the unit of measure, we have the option to do bill days per week. Uh, let's say when you book this camera set, um, I'm gonna sell it to you. If you book it for a week, I'm only gonna bill you for three days. Or if you book it for a month, I'm only gonna book it for 12 days or 10 days. Um, and that's because that's how the uh, the rental workflow uh, works. Um, they don't bill every day. It's If you book it a week, you get special pricing. And so we've got that built in there. That algorithm is very flexible. It allows you to kind of set up uh, any kind of pricing structure that you need. So I'm going to continue perusing through equipment here. I'm going to go to my event history. Uh, and this is showing us all of the usages of this piece of equipment. Uh, and if you recall earlier, I talked about that earnings. Uh, so this is showing me that I've made 4150 on this, uh, but I spent 66000 on it. So I'm still a little under on this. Hopefully you're having better luck than some of our sample data here with your equipment purchases. Um, separately from tracking each of these by the way it's also the the total hours that it's been used uh there's a scan manager tab within equipment uh and this allows us to uh, essentially scan in and walk around our equipment um, closet scan in different barcodes and basically just put a date timestamp on the presence of each piece of equipment so i'm going to do one of those i'm going to put in say joel is here in the um, equipment locker and i'm going to try to scan in a barcode i think i'm just going to try to remember one here um p1020 crossing fingers there so it went and found this particular item which is a microphone and it put today's date on it the time that joel said it's in the equipment locker um so the value of this is that we can then start to do searches based on a date range so maybe i want to find everything that i have scanned uh since January of this year, or maybe more importantly, not scanned since January of this year. This is going to bring me to a list of all of the 248 out of 250 equipments that I've not scanned yet this year, and that could potentially be my, my list of missing equipment that I want to go look for. Uh, that's all in the event history tab. Uh, there's a maintenance uh, history tab. It's going to track all the repairs of equipment. I'm um, going to skip over that for a little bit uh, and then go into the web viewer, and, and I like this a lot. Um, 
this is similar to the one in contacts I showed you earlier um, where I can just flip through all of my equipment and it's going to do instant searches on Google uh, or Craigslist um, for all the stuff that's for sale maybe I want to go to eBay find uh, all instances or maybe I need to go find um, a new motherboard for my video deck if I'm still using it so I can see what everybody else is buying and selling all of my equipment for I could even perhaps go to the manufacturer's website um, and maybe look information there or download a, a PDF user's guide. So I'm going to go over to my attach an FTP tab and previously I've done that uh, and so I've attached uh, this user's guide for this piece of equipment and there it is. So now everybody's got instant access to all the uh, information on a website about all of your equipment and any PDFs that you've attached. Uh, and since we're in equipment I'll mention maybe you might also want to scan in the, the purchase receipt or schematics or um, something like that uh, to uh, the equipment that you've got. So you've got it all instantly readable, readily available. So I talked earlier about this bookable thing. You know, we've got bookable people, bookable rooms, and I've got some bookable equipment. Um, and then there's other kinds of things. Maybe there's services that you're finding. So um, I did that too fast. Let me go slower. Um, I'm going to go into the categories and items module. And this is where we can put in things uh, that aren't necessarily rooms or equipment or people. Um, so I'm going to go to my services tab here. Uh, filter, I should say. And uh, we've got some other things. So maybe we're just doing um, a digi delivery, uh, or maybe we're doing a costume design, or conforming, or colorization. Uh, maybe these things we don't always have to occupy a specific resource uh, when we do them. Maybe it's just uh, lunch. Maybe we need to book that onto a project. Um, and just you know put a price to it so this is where you can create any kind of new item that's not a person or equipment or a room it's just a service that you do uh, and by the way we've also got in here um, the AICE and AICP um, budget items so if you want to start putting together budgets within Studio Suite based on those two uh, budgeting formats uh, you can certainly do that um, and uh, so while we're here in this module, I'm going to mention that over on the right side uh, are all of my calendar resources. Uh, these are the items that I've widowed down, whittled down from maybe I've got a thousand pieces of equipment. Um, I want just a, a smaller subset of those to appear in the calendar. Maybe I've got 30 rooms in my facility, but I don't need my closets and lockers and things like that to appear or offices. Uh, so only my bookable items appear over here. Um, and the ones that have these little color icons here, those are the ones that I've got set up to look at uh, in Google Calendar, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, so we talked about all those bookable items, bookable people, bookable uh, rooms, bookable equipment, and the other ones that we can create here. And they all show up in the calendar, and I've just clicked on that. And notice um, that, oh, it didn't appear. I'm going to go ahead and put in that extra little room that we created called Webinar Room. There it is. I'm going to click on that. Remember, I created that a bit ago, and now I've selected that, so it will now appear in my calendar. And as we're looking at that, I'm going to look at my um, pile up of questions here and see if there's any new ones that I should an uh, answer. Um, so, what, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, someone asked, how do we manage scheduling programs to be broadcast? Um, that's actually not within the scope of Studio Suite. Um, so, so it's a resource management um, application, media asset management, uh, scheduling, project management. Um, we don't get into doing uh, broadcast schedules uh, that you would see on TV. That's uh, something out, outside of our realm. Um, inventory. Someone's asking, um, if I'm editing an invoice or a piece of inventory and a coworker is also editing that same file, will the system warn us that our edits might conflict with each other? Um, well, what actually happens is something called record lock. Um, so many people can view the same record at the same time, um, and one person can edit it at the same time. So if, uh, let's say, I am editing um, a phone number, um, no one else can edit phone numbers on that contact at the same time. Everybody else can view all those phone numbers, but essentially there's uh, something that's only gonna let one person edit a record at a time. And because of the way Studio Suite is designed with uh, a bunch of kind of relational databases, uh, a lot of information is parsed off into separate tables. So you'll find that that's very rarely a problem um, and uh, it, it won't let you make a mistake. Um, 
I guess that's what the, the person was concerned about. Um, another question was, can we show in the calendar the availability of the resource? Uh, I think, yes, that's what we're looking at right here. So the calendar uh, can appear in a separate window, and there's a bunch of neat tricks about our Student Suite calendar. So uh, on the left side, what we're looking at here is uh, the resources. Um, and as I hover over some of these, it's going to show me information, things like phone numbers. Uh, so if I want to call up somebody or call into a room uh, to see you know, how they're doing on the project, uh, I can do that. Uh, what resources appear on the left side are governed by your preset. Uh, you can create as many presets as you want. Uh, Alex has a preset. I'm going to load his preset. Uh, his looks uh, bigger than mine. He's got <laughs> he's got more stuff in his preset than mine. Maybe I want to go just look at uh, equipment uh, and see how all of my equipment is allocated. So notice I'm zoomed into Thursday. That's today. I don't have any equipment booked today. Uh, I can shift click and I can zoom out. And so now I can look at uh, a month or you know a week or a month or a bunch of things, uh, a good range of time at once. Um, and I can see if I go to yesterday. Uh, I did have the uh, Arri Alexa basic camera set booked uh, and the uh, the red one camera booked. Um, so I'm going to zoom back out again and I'm going to go to I'm going to go back to my preset because that's the one I like. So you again create as many presets as you, as you like. Um, you could have a preset just for equipment, another one just for people. Uh, obviously, a preset can have uh, contain multiple items um, across categories. Um, and um, this red outline here is indicating a conflict. So I know that Joe Producer is double booked. So how could I resolve that? Well, I could just drag uh, one of those items to another resource, and this hopefully will resolve the conflict. It doesn't. The Joe Producer is very double booked, so I'm going to drag his other thing. Uh, now, because I changed that one thing, it knows there's many other things on the same project on the same day. Uh, and it's asking me, it's going to make it easy for me to apply that same change to all the other items. Uh, I could do this kind of surgically if I wanted to, uh, or match only the times or match only the status, uh, or uh, I'm going to just say no in this case. So and it's reminding me again that I've got conflicts, uh, and hopefully this will have uh, resolved my conflict. Boy, he's just uh, really booked up there, so I'm going to try to do this. Anyway, I'm not going to resolve all these conflicts, um, but maybe that will have done it. There we go. Yeah. So all the red lines are gone. And now Joe, Joseph producer uh, is no longer double booked. Uh, what about these colors? The different colors mean status. Um, so you can create as many different statuses as you like and corresponding colors. And what do I mean by that? So if I go over here to booking statuses, uh, I can create the uh, confirmed, hold, quote, uh, bumpable, checked in, checked out, canceled, complete, vacation, as many as I want, uh, and each one of them can have a color. So if I can I get a nice little color picker there uh, to be able to specify that. So once you learn what your colors are, um, you know how uh, everything is set up here. In my world, yellow is uh, hold. Uh, I, I forget what purple is actually. Well, I can hover over that and see. So I hover over this detail, and that means it's approved. Um, this one is bumpable, which means that we can move it around. Um, and maybe this we don't need to we don't want to work <laughs> we don't want to work past midnight on this. So I'm just going to drag the end of this down to here. And as I make those changes, if you look at the top of that tooltip, you can see that end time is changing. So I'm going to end it about uh, 11 o'clock there. Um, do I want to change everything else to match? I'm going to say no, but I could say yes if I want to. It's reminding me there's conflicts. <clears throat> So also notice, if you remember in the beginning, when I typed in uh, pizza in the kitchen, um, that shows up in the calendar here as well. So I can put other notes. Uh, I'm going to update this to say is all gone. And if I go back to look at my main menu, it's been updated there as well. So there's this, always this kind of two-way uh, communication going on. And I can also see at the bottom of my calendar tasks, um, and we're going to get into that in a little bit. Um, so some other aspects here. What if I want to be able to break out my resources here um, by status? So if I click this checkbox here, uh, I can see that uh, Joe Producer is booked in this time period uh, with a couple different statuses as both bookable, uh, uh, sorry, bumpable and approved, uh, and it's going to put each of them on a separate line. So I can kind of see a hierarchy of uh, statuses there. Um, We've got some other ways to view things. Maybe we don't want to see it by resources, but we do want to see it by project. So I can see here that this is all of the projects that I've got going on 
in this period. I've got uh, the shooting duplication project, I've got a de facto project, and I've got a pre-production um, uh, NIC uh, project going on in this period. Uh, and if I click this box here, uh, it's going to break it out into all of my resources. So I can see on the de facto project, I've got Edit1, Edit2, Avid1, Byron, Joel, and Joseph Producer all working on that same project, uh, and so on and so forth. And what about production? Well, if you remember from our beginning item, I only have one production going on um, here, or that mind map I showed you. Um, and when I hover over that, I can see all of the other items that are within that project. So there's a bunch of different views uh, to look at here in the in the calendar. And this is all in what we call the timeline view. It's, it's my favorite one because we can zoom in and out and all that. But there's some other views that people like a lot too. Um, this one is the linear week view. Um, and we can scroll around if I want to go look at the previous week or next week. Um, this is a little bit more of a I don't know, primitive view. This is the, the view that we had in Studio Suite up until version 9. Um, and these work the same way. You hover over them and you see the details. Um, we can go into a particular day if I want to go look at April 9th, uh, NAB Day 2, uh, and see, again, my resources on the left side, uh, and then the details of each booking uh, there. Uh, and then we've got some more traditional style calendars. Here's a, a traditional week uh, view, and I can drag out and see my resources on the left side. Uh, so if I don't want to see the Final Cut Suite, I can turn that off. If I don't want to see Edit 1, I can turn that off, on or off. Uh, at least I think I can. Um, um, should be able to. But I don't like this view anyway because it's hard to tell based on this. You know, I can't tell availability. It's There's, you know... What's booked when? I can't tell really. That's why I like this timeline view um, because we can see exactly. Uh, edit one is booked at nine o'clock. Avid, um, Avid one has nothing in it. Hey, I know. Why don't we book Avid one? So um, I can see that right now it's uh, the the blue line tells me right now. I'm going to go ahead and let's pretend we put in a an Avid one session at one o'clock, and I'm going to stretch that out to say five thirty. Uh, and let's say I know that I want to have Byron work on that too, so I want him to come in early. So I'm going to click in Byron's row just a little bit before 10 o'clock, and he's going to have to stay a little bit late just to wrap up and everything like that. So I can pick multiple resources uh, and have different times right from the calendar, uh, and I'm going to book that as a project. So I hit this button here called Book Project. Uh, I can either add this to an existing project or create a new one. I'm going to create a new one. And uh, now it's asking me to locate a client. So I'm going to put in, uh, who do we have? Do we have ABC in here? We do. So let's pick uh, John Wheeler at ABC. And as soon as I do that, uh, it's showing me the aging. So um, uh, this is just all obviously fake data. There's no real John Wheeler at ABC. Or, um, but let's pretend that um, they're 121 days overdue uh, on paying their bill. Um, and so I would be able to tell this guy, by the way, hey, uh, can you take care of this uh, bill before we proceed? Um, so only the yellow fields here are required. Uh, I'm going to call this webinar demo is the name of my project. Uh, and it's put in some default times um, from my user account. And it's also set up some slots for me of the kinds of people that I typically have on my projects. Uh, I've got a producer, um, and let's say I've got a coordinator uh, and an editor. Uh, and these are the people that are in the contacts module that have corresponding names, uh, titles, I should say. And let's say we're going to have an, an, uh, a writer. And uh, from my contacts module, I've, I'm fortunate to have uh, Sam Tolstoy uh, as one of our uh, writers. And you can see as I select those, if there's a phone number or email uh, available, it will pop those in as well. It's showing me down here uh, that I can, uh, the other items that I've booked, uh, Avid1 and uh, Byron, if I wanted to maybe add some more items, I could do that from here. Um, and it's also inherited uh, the default taxes and terms for my client. So ABC, John Wheeler, uh, his terms are 60 days. Um, and these are the taxes that he has. If I change to a different client, those would change. And of course, I could say to John, hey, listen, because you're overdue on our old bill, I'm going to put you to COD on this. And uh, if we have to ship your stuff to San Diego this time, I'm going to charge you the San Diego tax on this. And although you normally, uh, Sam, uh, or John Wheeler, I have a 10% uh, discount since you're late. I'm going to clear that out and not offer you a discount. Or, oh, you're, I'm going to be generous and give you a 30% discount. Uh, 
Um, now, I can also go in and um, specify that I'm going to create this as a budget uh, if we're in that phase of the project, uh, or both, uh, or just as an actual. Since we started this project from the calendar, I'm, we're kind of going in an actual style workflow, uh, and I'm going to hit the next button, and we're going to, oh, I'm going to back up a second. Uh, my user account, my default uh, company uh, is Planet Perfect Post, um, but let's say this particular project was for my great new company. Uh, this project would be flagged for that company within of my within my own internal companies, um, or I'm just going to put it back to my default one, Planet Perfect Post. So this is how you can kind of divide up uh, the different work that you've got into uh, potentially different companies, and again, you're going to have different reporting based on that as well. Um, and over here in the bottom right is the rate card that I'm going to use on this uh, project. I'm just going to use my normal one. I'm going to hit the next button. Uh, it's going to give me the option to uh, drop back into the calendar if I like, uh, or proceed into the projects module. Um, and it's reminding me again here uh, that I've got some conflicts. And you might be saying, well, I, I didn't book those things. Uh, so here's my option, uh, calendar or project. Uh, I'm going to go look at my project. Um, and here we are. And um, you'll recall that I only booked a couple things there, Avid1 and Byron. Why is all this other stuff there? Uh, that's because I set up Avid1 uh, to have a bunch of child items, what we call also books. Uh, and this one's a little bit silly. I should have looked at this before the webinar. Um, when I book Avid1, it's going to book the Sony uh, video machine. When I book that, it's going to book as a child of that Studio C, which books Joseph Producer. Uh, and then it looks like Avid1 also books the editor. Uh, and when I book Eddie Editor, a child of that is Edit One, and then Studio C again, so I can see it's created a conflict, uh, and Joe Producer comes with there. So that's, that was a bad example for a webinar. Um, but the same thing is um, with Byron. Uh, when I book Byron, he comes with a hard drive uh, and a microphone <laughs> and the uh, super collector, and I can expand and collapse all those things. Um, and we're going to take a break uh, in a moment, but I just want you to uh, notice that when I collapse these things, look at the price for Avid One. It's $18.95 for the room, and all of the other items have come in um, with their default prices. Um, but when I collapse the Avid One, the total for that is showing me the summary of all the other items that have collapsed inside of it. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, look at some questions here for a second. Uh, okay, the question is, can this system be automated to create certain files, such as invoices or productions form, production forms, after creating an event on a calendar? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we created that event on the calendar um, just before the break. It put all this stuff in here. And at the top of the screen here, I've got a couple options. I hit the print this button. And I have the option to either show prices if I'm doing this you know, for the client. We're going to talk about money. Uh, or not, if we're going to give this to the, the staff, the crew. So I'm going to show it with prices just so we can see what that looks like. Uh, and these forms are all customizable. Again, I talked about one of the hallmarks of Studio Suite is that um, because it's running in FileMaker, you have access to layout mode, uh, go into the script maker, modify all this stuff, but you can change the fonts and the colors and the positions and uh, remove some of the fields if you don't want them, uh, excuse me, or add other fields in that you do. Um, and here we can see uh, what's going to get printed out. Um, so if you want to change the colors, you can do all that stuff. I said that. I don't need to repeat. Um, there's also an option to email it. So what this is going to do is basically create a PDF of that same document. This time I'll do uh, without prices so we can see what that looks like. Somebody's been playing with my form here. Uh, that would look very similar, typically, um, minus the prices. Um, so I can email this either directly out of Studio Suite, or I can pass it through an email client such as Outlook or um, mail or something like that. Um, and just for a demonstration, I'm going to do it through Studio Suite. And we can see here that it's um, already um, formatted uh, uh, to the um, client of the project. Uh, the subject is already set up to the name of the project, and the PDF is already attached. And I just have to put, um, you know, hi, here is the quote or whatever it is. Um, and I could obviously send that out to my crew as well if I wanted them to see it. Um, and uh, there's also notifications. So what if I wanted to notify my crew about this whole project? So I'm going to hit the notifications button, and it's going to come up with some basic information about this already filled out. Uh, the client is ABC. The project name is Webinar Demo. That's the project number. Uh, please be on time for a 10 a.m. start. 
Um, so this is going to go out as a text to people that I've got in my contacts module that have a uh, SMS account set up. And I didn't go into the detail there, um, but just the, these are the people in contacts that have that. I can set when it's going to go. I'm going to do it right now. I'm also going to do it one hour before and maybe one day before the actual event. So if I hit send here, um, that's going to go out to those folks uh, and they're all going to get notified on their phone about that. So that's pretty neat. And we've got notifications for uh, projects, notifications for tasks, which we haven't even gone into. Uh, and then we can also do notification for an individual event. So here's the detail of a particular event. And notice up here, uh, there's a notification button and also an email if I wanted to email just this particular event. So make it very easy to do right out of Studio Suite. Uh, another question. Um, will the necessary, with the necessary permissions, can I do this from my smartphone? You can do some things. I'm going to get into that in it shortly. I should probably hurry up and get there. Um, I'm going to show you some of that in a bit. Um, and uh, another question is, uh, is the app available for BlackBerry? Sort of is the answer. Um, when we get into the um, uh, iPad and iPhone functionality, I'm going to, well, I'll tell you now. Um, there is a FileMaker app for iOS uh, called FM Go, FileMaker Go. Um, the, essentially uses uh, the layouts that we're seeing here on screen um, or different ones that are customized for iPhone and iPad. Um, you may be aware of the uh, Apple's war with Android. Um, so they're currently not doing that. Um, however, uh, there is some other internet functionality, uh, internet access that we are providing uh, in Studio Suite that I will show you um, that allows you to do some things uh, from BlackBerry and Android. Um, Let's see, how do you make child event items? Uh, I will show you that. Um, and another question is, is uh, do you have the application specific demo for film post-production? Um, it's all the same demo. Um, so if you download the demo, uh, there's a number of different sample data uh, objects in there. Uh, you know, we've got equipment, people, contacts. There's the uh, AICP uh, budget in there. We don't have a template yet in the, the demo, but you could make your own. Uh, we're working on that. Well, we're going to have one for you shortly uh, on, uh, on the demo. Um, and then uh, what about Gmail as a client? Well, Gmail is really just a, uh, a Gmail client. Um, it's not decided to um, integrate with other things. Um, if your browser is set up to use Gmail as your default uh, email client, uh, then Stu Suite should be able to send that out uh, through there. Um, actually, I'm not 100% certain about that, um, and I should be. So I will try to uh, find that out. Um, I don't know if I'll have an answer for it right now. Uh, what I'm going to do, though, is go back to the question of how do you make uh, child items. Um, so um, we can do that here in the project. We can adjust them here in the project. But I think what you're asking was how do you create them initially as the part of the template? So I'm going to go into my categories and items. Uh, and I should be careful not to get too tweezy detailed here. Uh, I'm going to go look at my uh, rooms. I'm going to go look at Avid 1, Avid 2 in this case. Um, so here's the detail of this room. And I could say that whenever I book Avid, uh, Avid 2, I want to add some other things. I want to add a uh, Iowa Super Collector because you could never get enough of those. Uh, maybe I want to add in a person. Uh, so I'm going to add in uh, Dana White as a person on this. And maybe I want to add in, we get the idea, um, some services. Uh, whenever I book Avid 2, I'm also going to add uh, maybe the thing called editing. Uh, obviously, it's not a thing. Um, so that's, that's the answer to the question. Um, you come to the uh, categories and items module, go into the detail of an item, uh, and this is where you can specify that when booking this item, also book. Um, and there's some other things like maybe we do or don't want to check for conflicts on this. Maybe we do or don't want it to autofill times. Uh, for example, like some things, time is irrelevant. Like if you're just adding on a dub, uh, you know, the start and end time of when you are doing that work may or may not matter. Um, and uh, some other things there we're going to skip over for now. So that's how you define them originally. Uh, and then when I go back into a given project, I can go further. So um, let's say I want to add another item as a child to Byron. Let's say I know that he's going to need something else. So I'm going to go down here. To, I click on my gear tool. I go down to add child item. Uh, I'm going to go into uh, equipment. And I know that he's going to need, um, I don't know, an Avalon 
processor number six. So I've just added that as a child item and we can see there it is right there. Uh, we can do some other kind of surgical things like maybe I want to um, deassign it from Byron. I can do that. Um, and maybe I want to duplicate. So there it's appeared at the bottom. I want to duplicate it. So now it's going to show up. I can specify what date. Yeah, I want that to come in on tomorrow. So I hit OK. So now we're going to have that same item appearing tomorrow from 9.45 to 6. There's some other kind of uh, tweezy details here. Maybe I want to split the time. Uh, I want to put a lunch break in there. So I'm going to say that uh, current event is going to end at 1 o'clock. Then it's going to start again from 2 o'clock and go end at 6. Uh, so I hit OK. So we're going to see one more item appear here. And it's basically going to divide this one from 9.45 to 6 into 2. So that's how you can insert a lunch break in there. Um, you know, the other thing I wanted to do was book uh, our webinar room, just to show you how that works. So I clicked on that add item, add item button. I'm going to do it again. Where's this button right here? Uh, and that brings me into my resources. And I can filter this by category if I want to. Um, maybe I've got a million rooms. I can also just type the name of it, W-E-B. So here's my webinar room. Uh, and it's going to come in with a default status for it, uh, also the default rate. So remember, I set up the hourly rate as the default. Uh, I can change that here to the daily rate because I'm on the phone with a client right now, and they're thinking it's going to be a daily thing. Um, and it's also coming in with the default uh, action. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my project, uh, and we'll see it down at the bottom. There's webinar room. Maybe I want to adjust uh, the price. Uh, oh, you know, it's only going to be an hourly thing. Okay, so I see there that the price has changed, and if I change the time here, Let's make it actually end at 2.30. Uh, I can go ahead and do that, I think. Maybe I need to get out of here and back in again. Uh, try it again. Uh, 2.30 or 4, something like that. There it is. Uh, so save changes. Um, do I want to change everything else? I'll say no. Notice that the quantity of time has changed down here. Maybe I want to override the price. Uh, you're my friend, so I'm just going to click in there and let's call it 80 bucks an hour. I can see those kind of price overrides in blue. So I know that they've been altered from the default rate. Uh, the start to end time is seven hours. You know, but for you, uh, let's let's um, let's just say 6.5. Maybe we talked for a while. I don't want to bill you for that, even though it's still costing me seven hours uh, to do that. So as I put all these in there, um, it's tracked. You can see it's put in the default rates, and of course I can change those rates if I want to. Uh, and it's showing me what I'm going to bill uh, for this because I set up my rates nicely. Uh, if I go to my expense view up here, it's also tracking the expense on the whole project. And when I know my build amount versus my expense, that means I know my profit loss. So here's a charge column. I'm charging $4,700. Uh, $4, uh, it's costing me $1,400. Therefore, my profit is $3,372 or a 70.59% margin. It's always good to know that going in. So when the client says, oh, can you lower the price a little bit? You know your margin right away. You don't have to figure it out or whip out Excel or a calculator. It's, it's all right there. Uh, and because I had set up some items with market rates, uh, there's my webinar room. I put in a $1,300 um, uh, based on the hour. Um, the, the, uh, the price of this would normally be $1,300. I can see the difference between the market rate. Um, would be this 1300 plus 400 equals 1700. Uh, and I can see that there's a 1300, a $3,000 difference between uh, the market rate uh, of uh, here and there. And this is kind of weird data, so it doesn't necessarily make sense, but I think you, you can see what I mean. Um, so I'm going to try to speed up the pace a little bit so I don't. Um, um, Get, uh, so I can get everything in. So we've assembled everything here. Um, we could have just as easily built all of that structure uh, that we saw over here on the actual. We could have built it on the budget um, and then hit this button here, send all to actual. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do that really quickly just so you believe me. I'm going to create a new project also so you can see how easy it is to do. Webinar 2, excuse my spelling. Uh, all my yellow fields are filled out. I'm going to create it as a budget hit next. Here I am on a budget. I'm just going to go in and randomly add a bunch of items so you can see how this works. Boom. We've got to book the bathroom, of course. Let's get some things that have rates. Um, Studio B has a rate. Turn off the bathroom. Okay, so now we've got a couple of rooms that are booked, uh, and it's gonna. I'm not going to do AVID one because that's going to create a conflict. Oh, I didn't mention that. So here it's showing me that, hey, there's a potential conflict if I book it 
yep, there's definitely a conflict, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to try to book Avid 2. So I'm going to add all those things in there without dates because, I, you know, this is just a budget. Theoretical, we're talking about this. So here's my budget. I'm on my new project. Let's suppose we go in here and we uh, put in some uh, dates. We're going to talk about, um, so we're going to start this now on uh, Friday. I'm going to slide those into place. And so now we've got some numbers here of how much this is going to be, and we can play with our rates a little bit here. Um, let's make this 200. And let's say the client agrees. We've printed this out, emailed it to them. They agree. I'm going to send this all to actual. So I'm going to hit send to actual. Do I want to do this? Yes, I do. And I'm going to clear out any quantity or price overrides that I've put in there. And they're going to refer to the default. I'm sorry, the, any time or quantity changes, the price overrides remain uh, because we want these times to be based on what actually happens. So, of course, in the reality of this, uh, we're going to end up working much later than expected. Uh, we may even add some additional items. Um, so we're on the actual side, so now this is happening. I'm going to go to Saturday, and we need more stuff. So I'm going to book some extra things here that weren't on the budget. Notice I'm adding them to the actual and not the budget. And what we end up with is a difference between the budget and the actual. This is kind of where the rubber hits the road, right? So um, on my difference view, uh, I'm looking at what I budgeted. Here's what actually happened. If we look at edit one, we budgeted eight hours. That turned into 12, which is a difference of four hours or a difference of $800 here in the difference column. So we budgeted 31.28 as a charge, turned into 57.28, which is a difference of $2,600 um, or 83.12%. Um, so isn't it great to be able to see this as you're making changes, uh, how you're doing uh, from your budget? Okay, I'm gonna move on. Uh, tasks. Um, so when you're doing these things, uh, of course, you've got a bunch of tasks that you need to do. Um, we can add these in one at a time, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to put a due date on here of tomorrow uh, at 12, uh, and I'm going to assign this to some people. I can assign it to one person if I want to, let's say to Alex, uh, or maybe I need all of my um, assistant engineers to know about this. Uh, so I can very quickly just plop in uh, everybody of a given title. Uh, or everybody in a certain group. Um, I didn't talk about that in context, but we can create groups of people uh, as well. Um, so I'm going to hit done there. And now that task has shown up not only on the main menu of those people I assigned it to, uh, but it's also shown up on the calendar. So here I am right there. It's for those people. There's my webinar number two. It's in the calendar. Everybody knows about it. So I can create these tasks one at a time. Uh, I can also create what we call um, task groups. I've got one here called edit session I'm going to use. So I'm going to load that task group. And this would be kind of a thing that you do over and over and over again. So on a given project, I have to review the script, load the content, do the rough edit, tweak the edit, do the audio. I can rough out some dates here of when this is all going to appear, when it needs to get done. And of course, I can assign it to one or more people uh, or groups of people uh, of a certain title. Let's say all of the composers need to know about that. Okay, so I hit done, and all those people have now just been notified um, on the calendar uh, and on the main menu about this. And as I showed you earlier, uh, if we go into a given task, uh, we can do a notification for this as well uh, to send it out to the people that we have SMS info for. So that's tasks uh, and notifications. I'm going to hit the back button to go back to where I was. So now I'm in my project. Notes and creative. I'm going to add a note here with date timestamp, yada, 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 yada. And I can specify whether those notes are going to appear in the calendar. Sometimes they should, sometimes they shouldn't. Uh, here I can assemble the different talent that's going to be working on this project um, or different setup information, um, different formats, sizes, speeds, frame rates, uh, different things like that. Um, let's go to media assets. This is important. Um, let's create a new related media asset in the library. This is a window showing us all of those assets. Um, and uh, we can't see them all yet. We don't have any, so I'm going to create one. Uh, let's say we created two. I'm going to call the first one uh, R1 for real one. It's created the library number and a barcode. Uh, it's asking me now for the name of the second one. I'm going to call that R2. Uh, and so now we've just created all these media assets. I could put in some different titles 
cuts, cues, clips, scenes, spots, segments, songs, whatever we call them. Uh, and by doing that, we have now just created labels uh, for all the different media formats. So here's a nice looking CD label. It's inherited all of my client project information, all the titles, barcodes, uh, all that stuff, ready to go. You can customize those, of course. Um, I'm talking fast because we're running out of time. So this is also, um, we also have the ability to track um, media, uh, digital media assets. So I'm going to load in um, some specific metadata that I'm looking for, and I'm going to locate a given folder uh, that I always use, um, introduce, introducing Final Cut Pro, and it's now going to go basically take a snapshot of all of the files and folders within that folder, um, all the creation and modification dates and times, and the other uh, metadata that I asked for. So if I look for, say, time code uh, begin, I'm going to see all those time code values there and the other metadata that I requested. So of course, I can uh, launch these if I want to. So if I click on one of those files, it's going to open up in whatever that native application is, whether it's QuickTime or Final Cut or Word or Excel or Photoshop or you know whatever. So we've got instant access to all the media assets that we're working with. Um, and of course, I can go over to my attach an FTP tab, uh, drag one of those media assets in there. Uh, let's say it's this one here, uh, this one here. Uh, and I would have the ability to deliver this via FTP. I'm not going to do it now because we're short on time. Uh, but this would send an FTP directly out of Studio Suite to the destination, and we would have logging and the ability uh, to do that. So I'm going to jump back to my library. Uh, sorry, back to my project. Um, and let's make an invoice. So I'm going to select all for invoice. It's gone down and checked these checkboxes. And uh, it's not checking the items that don't have a rate because it's assuming if you don't have a rate, um, you uh, aren't going to invoice for it. Um, if I want to, you know, definitely put these on my invoice anyway, just to show you that I'm giving them for free, I can do that. So I'm going to now kind of manage these. Uh, maybe I don't want to invoice for that. I'm going to overwrite the prices a little bit. This is just $20. Um, so on and so forth. Once I get this all finalized how I like it, uh, I'm going to invoice the selected items. Uh, I can either do this as a partial invoice if I want to, or a final, which is what I'm going to do. And now this is basically all going to get copied over to a new invoice in the invoices module. All those items, I don't need to uh, mistype or retype all of that. Same price. Uh, all the taxes have come in appropriate to uh, the client. Uh, and then I would just hit print this invoice. And here I am with a very nice looking printout. Uh, of course, I can save this as a PDF if I like. Um, or uh, if I want to, I could um, hit the email, uh, this invoice that's going to create a PDF automatically and allow me to send it out directly through Studio Suite or a web client. Uh, and if I had this set up to uh, connect it to QuickBooks, this button right here would say export to QuickBooks. I could click this button and it would, uh, this invoice would instantly show up in QuickBooks if I was on a PC uh, or if I was using QuickBooks online. Uh, you may know that the Mac version of QuickBooks is a little bit behind the times. Uh, and so in that case, we export a file uh, to the desktop and then import it into QuickBooks. So um, let's look at a couple things here. I'm going to jump back to um, this client. And th that was the second project that we created. I should have done my invoice on the first one. But what I want to do is um, show you that from that client, uh, we see all the information that we just created. So I'm, gonna, I'm in contacts. So here's that project I just created. Uh, I can jump right to that project. I can see all the details of that project. Um, jumping back to the client, I can uh, go to the financial information. Here's that invoice that we just created. I could jump right to it. Now I'm looking at that invoice hit the back button, go back to my contact again. I go to the media assets tab, still within contacts. Uh, and this is going to allow me to see all of the media assets that I just created for it. There's my webinar two media assets. And of course, from there, I can jump back to the project. Um, so let's get into some other stuff. I'm going to hide FileMaker right now. And what we're looking at now is my iPad. Uh, this is uh, sitting right next to me, and I always have to take my hand off the mouse and do it with the iPad. So you'll notice that all the changes that I made uh, are showing up on my iPad. I'm going to go into my projects module, uh, and we're going to be able to see uh, that project that I just created on my iPad. Uh, all the resources, all the dates, all the times. Um, and I think my iPad might have been asleep or disconnected, but here it is, finally coming up. So here's my iPad. I can scroll down, look at this stuff. If I want to flip, go look at the, the first project that we created. Um, 
it's going to come up here in a second. Here's all the items that I booked. If I want to edit one of these, notice down the bottom I've got my webinar room. Um, I'm just going to touch on that, um, and that's going to bring up the edit window uh, to where I can make any edits to that. Let's say they're going to end. Uh, I'm walking around my facility now. I'm just going to end this at 6 o'clock, um, and let's say we've got to put in some notes here uh, about why we went a little bit late. Boo, 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 boo. Uh, save changes. And so now that change is going to get reflected back in AlterCon. So notice, sorry, into <laughs> Studio Suite. So notice it ends at 4 there. I'm going to go back into uh, Studio Suite. I'm going to look at my first one here. First project that we created. I'm going to go down to Webinar Room. It's ending at 4. So um, there's a lot on the iPad. I don't want to, we don't have time to get into it right now because I do want to show you some other stuff. Um, but you can do the basic functionality of Studio Suite from the iPad. Um, so I'm going to hide that. I want to, I'm going to hide uh, FileMaker and I'm going to go into uh, Chrome because I want to show you a couple things here. So this is some web functionality that comes with the network version of Studio Suite. So there's a web request module. Uh, and this is going to allow you to post this on your website uh, where you could put in, um, uh, allow your customers to put in their name, uh, email, and information, and they can specify specific equipment that they want to use um, to uh, reserve. Maybe they want to book your Pro Tools system. Uh, maybe they then also want to uh, have a room. So we're going to go down to rooms and pick a room uh, that we're looking at here. So I want to book edit one. So they can assemble all these things into a request that shows up in Studio Suite as a web request. Everybody gets an email. Uh, that request can be accepted, send out another email that shows up as a new project in Studio Suite, uh, and then they're there. So basically a front end uh, to allow your users uh, to request stuff uh, from, from um, in Studio Suite. Um, so I'm going to go back a little bit here. And um, let's look at Web Glancer. So Web Glancer is a secure login. I'm going to go ahead and log in. So this is where your staff can log in at nighttime or whatever from home and be able to look at uh, read-only. Everything in Web Glancer is read-only. So maybe I want to look at uh, Sony. I want to look up somebody at Sony. Here's all my people there. Let's go look at Simon. Uh, here's information from the Studio Suite Contacts module. Uh, read-only in the web. Um, obviously, it's a secure access. So only people that you give uh, user, Studio Suite user accounts would be able to see this. Uh, and a read-only calendar. So an important thing about this is that um, this does not occupy a seat. Uh, so Studio Suite is sold by the seat. Um, but you can have 100 people looking at this, uh, and it doesn't use your seat count. So notice here is our webinar demo and our webinar 2. So everything that we scheduled is showing up right here in um, the uh, what we call web glancer calendar and there's also a mobile version of that that shows up on mobile devices uh, also our tasks can show up there as well um, so I forget when I scheduled those Let me go fast forward to the next day um, I'm not sure what's going on with that um, so I'm going to show you the um, mobile version that would show up on your phone back up a little bit here main menu getting there eventually if I was smart I would have that available to me okay mobile here we go so this is also a secure login so if we shrink this down to what would look like on your phone it looks kind of like that uh, and then we could go into say calendar and here's all the stuff that we just scheduled um, for our project there's our webinar right there uh, webinar room that we created on our project. Um, so this is pretty neat. Um, and you can see it's fairly fast too. So that's the mobile item. And if we click on one of these, we'll see all the details uh, of that and we can go back. So um, the really cool thing that I want to save the best for last is Google Calendar. So um, I'm going to zoom into Thursday. Everything that we scheduled in Studio Suite on our project, on our webinar project, is right here in Studio, in, in Google Calendar. Um, so I've got access to this uh, because I logged in. So this is a secure access. You can also invite people to these calendars um, so that they don't have the ability to cha make changes. But if I do give them ability, notice this ends at 530. This is edit one on our webinar demo ending at 530. 
I'm going to make a change in Google Calendar to have it end at 2 o'clock. This is Thursday, edit 1, now ending at 2 o'clock. I'm going to hide that. I'm going to go back into Studio Suite, um, find it here, edit 1 on Thursday. In a minute, we're going to see this change, this 5.30. Um, and while we wait for that to change it, it happens every few minutes. Um, it's obviously not a live connection, but there's a, a script that runs every few minutes that checks that. So while that's doing that, I'm going to look at some questions. Is the limit of user accounts? Okay, um, you can make as many user accounts as you want. Um, however, it's only going to let the maximum number of users onto Studio Suite at once. So if you, um, you know, let's say you bought a five pack of Studio Suite, um, you could create 100 users. Um, it's only going to let any random dynamic floating uh, five of those on at once. Um, so if a sixth person wants to sign on, the, one of those first five is going to have to sign off. Um, so as I was doing that question, sure enough, that edit one, we can see here that it changed to 2 o'clock uh, right in Studio Suite, and that's been changed in Calendar. Now, if you keep in mind that you can access your Google Calendar on your phone, um, that means that you can make changes to Studio Suite schedules from uh, your Stu Suite uh, from your Google Calendar on your phone, um, and so if we go look at this Google Calendar, there it is, right there. Um, I'm going to go back into Studio Suite and make another change on that same item, and let's say this time I'm going to end it at I don't know noon, uh, 12 uh, p.m. Save change. Um, do I want to change everything else? I'll say no. Uh, and so obviously the change is two ways. It's going to take a minute to occur. Um, uh, and while that's occurring, I want to just see if there's any more questions. Um, and uh, we've only got a few minutes left, so if you've got questions, now would be a good time. Uh, can we use our current Gmail calendars with Studio Suite? Um, okay, so if I look at this Google Calendar, um, what we see on the left here is your calendars. Um, these calendars here were created from Studio Suite um, because there needs to be a uh, ID um, connection um, between Studio Suite and Google. So when the, something changes in Google, it knows to go change it in Studio Suite. So if you've got yourself in uh, your Google Calendar um, and you want to schedule yourself from Studio Suite, you actually do have to send a, a new instance of yourself from Studio Suite to the Google Calendar. Um, and then you can either have both of them visible uh, or eventually merge all of your um, old the stuff in your original instance of yourself in Google Calendar to the new instance of yourself in Google Calendar. And one important thing to know is that um, the things that are showing up in Calendar from Studio Suite must be created in Studio Suite. Um, if you create an event in Google Calendar, Studio Suite doesn't know anything about that because the it, Google Calendar doesn't have any uh, concept of clients and projects and things like that. Um, so it's, uh, you know, the, what Studio Suite Connection Calendar has got to come from Studio Suite. You can edit it in Google Calendar, um, but then it needs to be, um, got to create it in Studio Suite. Getting tongue tied here, but I think you know what I mean. So, um, let's see, we've got just a couple minutes left. Any more questions? Is there any way to back up all the data in Studio Suite X? Yes. Um, so. Studio Suite runs in FileMaker, um, FileMaker Pro on your desktop and on your server, uh, the FileMaker server application. Within FileMaker server, there is a whole backup schedule utility. Um, you can create a bunch of different schedules so that it will back up um, whatever interval you're comfortable with. Um, here, we do it every hour because we're developing. Um, for you, it may be every couple hours or even once a day, depending on the volume of data that you put in and how catastrophic it would be to lose a few hours of work. Um, and so just a couple quick notes on that. Um, you want to make sure that those backups that um, FileMaker Server is creating uh, are getting put on a separate hard drive, of course, because if that hard drive fails, you want to have the other hard drive to be available. Uh, and you also want to turn off indexing on your primary file um, uh, so that uh, your server is not constantly monitoring um, for search purposes, the files that the FileMaker server is hosting out. Um, and then um, you also want to make sure that if you're on a Mac, that Time Machine is not trying to back up the live hosted uh, files in FileMaker server. 
uh, you want it to only back up the uh, backups, so to speak. Um, and so there's a very good backup um, system uh, protocol uh, for Studio Suite. So um, I think we are about at the end. Uh, and believe it or not, I've actually only touched on a little bit of Studio Suite. Um, actually, I've got a couple minutes here. Uh, so quick log is important. Um, let's say you pass me in the hallway. I'm an editor. Uh, and you say, hey, will you redo the edit on that thing? Uh, you didn't schedule me on it, so it doesn't show up here yet. Um, but uh, i got to log my time. So I'm going to click the quick log button. Try saying that five times. Uh, and this is showing me a list of all the projects that I've got going on this week. Uh, and let's say that the one I'm working on is called Webinar Demo. Uh, for ABC, that's the one, and uh, I'm just going to type my name here, J O E, and this is reduces the list down to myself uh, and or people that have J O E in their name, uh, and so that's showing me I'm creating a conflict. I'm going to hover over that. It's going to show me what I'm conflicting with. So I'm already booked nine to five. So okay, I'm going to go ahead and book myself from say five thirty to six um, on a uh, re-edit per dude in hallway. <laughs> um, so I'm going to go ahead and book myself on that project. Um, and then I can even go in at the bottom there and say that I am now complete. So I'm going to click on that and say that I have now completed uh, this project, uh, this task. And that way everybody would know about it. Um, and so if I go back to my main menu and I scroll down the bottom, there it is right there. And I can edit it from here uh, also. Um, Okay, I'm going to try to do a couple things real quick. Studio Suite comes with a barcodes module allowing you to sheet out, print out sheets and sheets of either uh, barcodes for media tracking, um, if you've got physical media assets, or for equipment tracking. Um, works on regular Avery labels or Dino, uh, Dymo style labels. Um, equipment maintenance we didn't really get into, but this allows you to manage uh, all of the maintenance that you're doing and track all of that. Uh, there's also employee schedules. You can go ahead and create uh, a schedule for your staff in this module. Uh, you can schedule time as um, with different statuses, like time off or family leave or vacation or you're sick or whatever statuses you want to create. Um, and then uh, those items can uh, show up in the calendar module, so you can see when people are booked, uh, when you shouldn't book them, and uh, all that kind of thing. Uh, web request, I mentioned that a minute ago. So this is where we can come in and see the items that have been requested. Let me see if I've got one here. We got a bunch of demo data from NAB in here. Um, anyway, that we would see the items here and the contact info, and then we would be able to hit accept request. Uh, okay, we're about out of time. Um, let me see if there's any last question. We are all good on questions. Thank you all so much, everybody, uh, for watching. Uh, the next webinar is next Thursday, and it is going to be on the basics chapter of Studio Suite, um, you know, you, the, just kind of the basics, not even a um, functional, well, it is functional on, you know, things like, but that's the go-to button. Here's how you create records, duplicate records. Um, so it's one of the first things that you would look at. Thank you all so much. Um, please give us a ring if you've got any questions. We look forward to hearing from you.